Hey there, welcome to the 4050 Easy JavaScript tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. Let's look a little more into the try catch block by looking at the throw function which you can use to include in your code to throw custom error messages for you and your end users. So custom errors can be defined by you uh, based on logic that you've entered. So you don't have to rely on the five basic errors that we went over in the last tutorial and the five basic errors that JavaScript tends to throw all over the place. You can make up your own. So the syntax of the try catch error, let's go over it one more time, is you start out with the keyword try and in curly braces you have a piece of code that runs. Uh, and inside the try you also have the throw function. So you start out with the keyword throw um, based on whatever logic you have, whether it's an if statement or a switch statement or whatever. Uh, in the only argument that you need to send it is the custom error message. So it Right here, I have the custom error message if validation failed. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, like you know, too many capital letters, or you know, it's not a number, etc. And in the catch block of the try catch block, you send in an error again. Again, you can call it whatever you want. I would you do something with the code if it can't run if there's an error. Uh, the one thing I would mention is that the error.name and error message do not work here. Uh, it just looks for the error. This is because you're not defining a basic uh, JavaScript error which comes with a name and a message like reference error followed by message. Here you're defining the whole message yourself. And you can console log the just the error itself. So it'll output custom error here, validation fail, blah, 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 which is we have here. So let's quickly do something. Um, so I have, I have a setup here. Uh, I have a button. Uh, I have an output span ID down here. And I have a text box which has an ID of num which I'm getting the value from. So when I click on the event listener on the button, it takes the value from my text box and displays it into the output. So if I put in 5, it gets a 5. If I put in 10, it gets a 10. So if I put in t, it outputs a t which is not a number, right? So you want to do some kind of validation where because the rule says enter a number between 1 and 10. So let's put all of this into a try catch block and see what we can do. So we'll put this into a try. Let's get rid of this. So in the try we'll get the name of the value and then we'll do if num is less than 0. So we're setting up an if statement. We'll do row number is too low. Try again. We'll do another if statement. Again, it's not an else if statement. We're just doing a, another validation check. So we'll do if num is greater than 10. We'll do throw number is too high. Try, try again. And then finally, we want to make sure that it's a number. So we'll do if. So we'll do um, parse int. This is something that I went over a long time ago when I went over parse int and parse float. We'll look at the number. We'll do throw, enter on number, please. So it's, it's trying to see if the number can be uh, converted into a parse integer. Uh, into an integer. If it can't be, then it throws the error. If it can be, then we sk skip over this. Now to do the catch block. So we'll do catch, I'll put in an E for my error. With the catch, uh, we'll do document.get element by ID output, should have just copied, we'll do inner text equals to E. So we're just throwing the error. So we can't do E.name and E.message. Great, right? Uh, before we do this, I need to actually move up the uh, actual thing inside the try area here. So like document.get element by ID. So if all of these, uh, if my validation passes all of these three if statements, it'll come over here and it'll say output inner text num. So if it hits any one of this, uh, it'll skip the rest of the code and go into the cache block. So if it throws numbers less than zero, it won't even execute any of these. So it'll execute them one by one. It has to pass all three before it makes it to line 17 here. So let me update and run. So now if I enter a one, I got it. If I enter a five, I got it. If I enter a 10, I got it. Now let's enter a minus five. Number is too low, try again, because it's less than zero. Let's do a 15, number is too high, try, try again. And let's say if I enter the letter T again, it says enter a number please, it is not a number. If I enter a, a symbol, enter a number. If I do nine, 
There you go. So there you go. This is just a brief introduction to how you can use the throw function in your try catch block to throw custom errors. Uh, it's extremely useful, not just for you know your end users, but for yourself as well. So you can double check yourself when you're running your own code. Uh, I hope this was useful. This is uh, I, I like like I said before. I use the try catch throw error uh, all the time uh, when I do JavaScript, just for myself because. Uh, like everyone, I'm prone to make mistakes, and this helps. Uh, this also uh, helps me, helps remind myself uh, what kind of data I was expecting when I wrote the code because I may not use this script again for another three or four months. Uh, well, anyway, that's all I have for the try catch block. I hope you've learned something. Uh, if you have any questions about how this works, please ask in the comments below. Remember to visit easyprogramming.net to get more tutorials. Thanks for sticking with me for the last 45 tutorials. Hope to see you back here soon. Have a good one.